Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is very exciting because we're going to be chatting through my spring TBR or the top books I want to read for this upcoming season. Personally speaking, I'm very much a list maker. I feel like I am most productive and successful when I really write down and think about my goals for any particular topic, which is why I love making TBRs. That being said, for my spring TBR, I'm hoping to rebound from, let's just say, a less than stellar reading pace of the last like eight weeks or so. So I really thought about what books are really calling out to me, books I think I already know I'm going to enjoy because I'm already in the midst of the series or a new series I feel like could jump at the top of my list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my spring TBR that will hopefully fix what was kind of a bad season of reading for me in the winter. The first book that's on my TBR is definitely, I would say, perhaps my number one priority, and it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, and that is The Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. I have started this book. This is the third and final book to the Fitz and the Fool trilogy, which is the final trilogy within the Robin Hobb universe. I've talked about this entire universe at length, my love for Robin Hobb at length, and also my need to read this particular book at length. I have been procrastinating. I have been putting it off because I don't want to deal with the emotional fallout that I know I'm going to experience when I finally inevitably read and conclude this final trilogy. I have started it. I am happy to report I am really enjoying it. I love Fitz. I love The Fool. I need to finish this this spring so I can move on and you know maybe just restart with The Assassin's Apprentice over again. A new series that I definitely want to check out this spring and possibly even check out books two and three is the Lycanus trilogy by James Islington. I read The Will of the Many last year and so did a lot of people. It was honestly so entertaining, so breakneck, and just I can't wait for the next installment in that series. But I thought, you know, what a great way to pass the time by checking out this author's backlog because I did like his writing style so much. This is another Roman inspired fantasy trilogy following sort of a chosen one-esque character. I do believe there is some element of a school setting, though I'm not sure if it's like the entire focus of the plot, but basically this is set in a fantasy world where once these powerful godlike beings were in control, but it's been 20 years since those beings have been overthrown. And also the humans who worked alongside them and also had an element of their power agreed to the rebellions for tenants and basically had their gifts greatly reduced. From there, we're introduced to our main character who begins to have his own power powers awaken, powers that have not been seen in decades, powers that have not been seen since before he was alive, and I believe things get rather complicated from there. I've heard really good things about this trilogy. I've seen so many comments from you guys letting me know that you think I'm going to enjoy it and just your overall thoughts and feelings. I feel like this will be just a great longer fantasy series to pick up this spring, and I'm just looking for something kind of epic and entertaining, so I'm hoping to love this. Next up, I have a couple of weirder books that I feel like will really have me flipping the pages. The first is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. I have two books by this author, and both of them are really calling out to me, but I recently picked up Miracle Creek, and ever since I read the synopsis, I just feel like I need to read this book as soon as possible. The setup is a strange one. Basically, Basically, there is this submarine project that promises that people who enter this submarine can have like miraculous healing or like a solving of a lot of different problems. So a lot of different people sign up to be a part of this scientific experiment for various reasons. However, though, something goes wrong, resulting in an explosion and two people inside the submarine Die. From there, we're reading and following the perspectives of a lot of different people in and surrounding this project, and we're not quite sure who was at fault for creating this explosion, and I think we're beginning to try to piece together what actually happened. There's one blurb sentence at the back of this book that really sold it for me and it said the perfect novel for chaotic times and I just feel like this is going to be about humanity and healing and obviously I think it's going to also be very intense with that thriller mystery component right at the heart of it but Yes, I got this recently and I want to read it right away. Another book that just sounds weird and one that I picked up recently is Severance by Ling Ma. I read Ling Ma's short story collection recently and really, really enjoyed it. Her writing style is incredible and her concepts are often very strange but have so much weight to them. Severance sounds like a strange book and honestly, there isn't a clear synopsis of what this book is about 
on the book. From what I can glean, it seems like it's some sort of satirical, futuristic work environment, like corporate work environment to the extreme. Said to be the best work of fiction I've read yet about the millennial condition, the alienation and cruelty that comes with being a functional person under advanced global capitalism and compromised pleasures and personal meaning found in claiming some stability in a terrible world. Again, I feel like this is going to be a strange sci-fi book that's really going to get me thinking. I already know I love this author's writing, so I can't wait to read this. The next book that's on my TBR is His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. I love Naomi Novik so much. I've read most of her books that she has released. I have one other book also in the School of Ants that I should get to soon, but this is the first book to one of her earlier fantasy series. It's a historical drama series with dragons like historical military series and also there are dragon corp i feel like this is going to give dragon fantasy but in a very different way than i have consumed recently which i really appreciate naomi novik's writing is just some of my favorite i just feel like she excels at not only having a beautiful writing style but having such intricate and interesting world building this is a rather long series but you know i loved learning about the napoleonic wars so i feel like the napoleonic wars with dragons feels like a fail safe pickup you know the next book that's on my tbr is The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin is one of my all-time favorite authors, and I believe this is my last remaining series of hers that I have not read. So obviously, I need to read it as soon as possible because I just love her writing so much. But this is set in an ancient fantasy city, and the only law here is peace. And the way that peace is maintained is that there are these individuals called gatherers, and they stock the rooftops of the city at night, and they basically absorb the magic of of the sleeping mind to help soothe and prevent any type of angry feeling perhaps and also capture any individual they feel could be a danger to this peace in city. However though at the beginning of this book something is kind of thrown upside down happening at the citadel at the center of this city and our main character who's actually a very powerful gatherer begins to start questioning not only things about his position but the government at large. I love this author. I feel like she truly can do no wrong. So yeah, I need to read this book. Next, I have two standalone fantasy books I wanna get to as soon as possible. The first is Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. I love Emma Wong so much. She also wrote The Sword of Kaigen, which is one of my all-time favorite fantasy books out there. So needless to say, I have very high expectations for this, but this is set in a fantasy world where magic is key. But in the story, we're introduced to our main character, Sconia, and Sconia has been an orphan since the age of four, and she has devoted basically every single hour of her life for the past 10 years towards the pursuit of being admitted into the high magistry so she can pursue this dream and goal. She has successfully done it and she thought she's knocked down all the barriers of her life But she quickly learns that basically everyone in this ministry does not want her there and they're sabotaging her left and right Including assigning her a janitor to be her research assistant But this janitor has a very storied past Let's say and they actually begin to form an unlikely alliance and begin to work together magic intrigue really say no more. I just can't wait to pick this book up. I feel like this author has such a talent with fitting so much world building and character work and not a lot of space. I feel like this could be a five-star read. Next book that's on my list is The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. I have been reading Anne Leckie's very beloved sci-fi trilogy this year, and I'm on the third and final book. So when I complete that, I definitely want to be sure to check out her fantasy release and see what that is all about. I do believe this is actually a fantasy standalone, which I also find rather appealing because while I do love starting new long series, it's nice to kind of pick up a book and it have an end at the end of it, you know? In this story, I believe we're actually reading from the perspective of a god. As for centuries, a city has been protected by the raven god, but it says gods meddle in the fates of men, men play with the fates of gods, and a pretender must be cast down from the throne in this masterful first fantasy novel from Anne Leckie. I love Anne Leckie's writing style so much. She makes such compelling characters. I feel like I'm going to just devour this and I'm hoping it's one that I love. Next up, I have a couple books I feel like I have just been putting off and I need to get to them sooner rather than later. The first is Babylon's Ashes by James S.A. Corey. I feel like I was on a roll with reading The Expanse series by this author, a series I've honestly really enjoyed. The first five books were great, so entertaining, so plot forward, but for some reason I have let 
way too much time elapsed between finishing book five and starting book six. I've been reading a lot of sci-fi, but just for some reason, not the Expanse series. So I'm putting a stop to this and hopefully starting my continuation of this series this spring. But if you're not familiar, the Expanse series sort of takes place in a near future reality where there are governments now on Earth, Mars, the moon, and a series of space stations called the Belt. There is a lot of tension between all of these governments. And in fact, war has been kind of brewing for a long time. At the beginning of book one, we're introduced to our main character, James, and he is a ship captain. And him and his crew basically stumble upon a piece of ancient alien and technology and everything sort of begins to go wild from there. Every book has been so unpredictable, so plot forward, as I said, a huge cast of likable characters. And you're reading this story from so many different angles, planets, and just there's so many motivations to read and enjoy from. Book five was literally my favorite of this series so far. I do not know why I haven't picked up this book yet. Similarly, I also desperately need to pick up Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third secret project of his secret projects that released last year. I read the first two basically right when they came out, but for some reason just like didn't continue on as I received the later books in the mail. And I'm especially confused why I haven't picked this book up yet because so many people say that this is their favorite of the four and I love Tress of the Emerald Sea. But this, I also believe, is actually a Cosmere novel, but it's about two characters who meet and communicate unexpectedly through fate and time. It also centers art. We have one character who's in one world, kind of drawing and painting, and we have another character in this world of darkness who stalks the streets, and they're only ability to protect themselves is also through drawing. So like art and connection through art is like a big part of this book. And I don't know, the and there's just so many stunning illustrations throughout this. I need to read this. I do not know why I haven't read it but this spring. The next book that's on my TBR might be a little bit of a surprise and would actually be a reread for me, and that is Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. I've read this book and this series, I want to say, twice now throughout my life, but it's been a really long time, and I just remember loving this so much, and I've been craving kind of a more romance-centered, romantic story with a slow burn, but still good fantasy politics, and I remember this absolutely delivering that, but I want to reread it before I recommend it again, like on my channel and social platforms. I recall loving this, but there's only one way to find out. But this basically follows our main character who is a prisoner at the beginning of the story. And she basically makes a deal with the commander of the royal forces in this world to be a food taster. So she could easily be assassinated or killed off. It's a very dangerous job. And things get really complicated really, really quickly. The entire trilogy really balloons. It's all about magic and betrayal and romance. Again, I remember loving this so much and I'm excited to pick it up again and then talk more about it on my channel. Another book that I have put off for way too long is The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante. I read My Brilliant Friend now two years ago and loved every single second of it. It was heartbreaking. It was riveting. It was just so well written and I just absolutely need to continue on with book two. If you're not familiar, this is a literary fiction story. It starts off in Naples in the 1950s. We're following two young girls in book one. We're watching them grow up. We're watching them become friends. And at the end of book one, they're kind of like entering their early adulthood, which is where book two sort of begins. This is a series that very much hyper focuses on this very unique friendship between these two women and also watches them grow and change throughout their entire lives. It's also very much a commentary on this particular time and place. And I mean, everyone loves the Neapolitan series so much. I love book one, so I'm hoping to read book two very soon. Next, I have a final book in a trilogy I have just been loving, and that is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I have loved this silly, fantastical, fairy tale leading YA series so much. It's been a joy to read. It's been like the perfect palette cleanser for this first part of the year. So I'm very much looking forward to wrapping the entire thing up with the final installment, A Curse for True Love. This story introduces us to our main character, Evangeline. At the beginning of book one, her heart is broken. She is desperately looking for help and solace. So she turns to a character named Jax, who in this world is known as the God of Broken Hearts. She makes a deal with him. And in exchange for three kisses of his choosing, he will basically help her. Of course, everything gets thrown upside down. Evangelina is thrown into some very unexpected politics, especially when she is vying for the ability to marry 
a prince in a faraway kingdom. It's all about romance and first love and coming of age. It's funny and endearing and sweet. And it has this fairy tale quality to it throughout the entire thing. Jax is very much like Hal from Hal's Moving Castle. It's just like very endearing, very cute. And the covers very much match the style and vibe of this. It's just too fun and too delightful. And the last book that's on my spring TBR just looks beautiful. Like the cover itself is so spring and that is Tom Lake, by Ann Patchett. Obviously, I'm on a little bit of an Ann Patchett, hopefully, <laughs> readathon year. I'm reading Bel Canto very, very soon, so I wanted to make sure I lined up my next Ann Patchett read. And I decided with Tom Lake, just because I've heard so many delightful things about it. The audiobook is also narrated by Meryl Streep, which is, let's just say, tempting. This book follows our main character, who is a mother. It's set kind of during COVID years, and she lives on a farm with her family and her daughters. And in this story, she's sort of recounting her past life with her daughters, um, kind of showcasing how often mothers are sort of viewed from the lens of being a mother, but in fact they can live many exciting and many different lives, and it allows sort of a closeness to develop between the mother and the daughters within this book. This is a very character-focused story, a very sweet story. I've heard so many amazing things about it. I do feel like I want to read our Town again, which is a play that is centered quite a bit in this book before I read this book. I have read it, but it's been many, many years. But yes, this I'm definitely wanting to read soon. Alrighty, guys, that is my spring TBR. Please let me know down below some books you hope to get to this spring, as I would love to know. And I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!